Hello, yearbookers. Welcome to Yearbooks Live, the podcast for yearbook teams to learn everything you need to know about the yearbook business. I'm your host, your coach, your teacher, JP, coming to you from sunny South Florida. Today, we're going to learn about yearbook covers. We want to let you create the most incredible yearbook cover possible, and how do you do that? What options do you have? How much does all this cost? What do you do with the end sheets? We're going to cover all that and more in today's episode of Yearbooks Live. So sit back, relax, and let's get into it. All right, Yearbooker, so today's podcast is also going to be very visual. And don't forget, we have this entire podcast online in a video format at yearbookslive.com. So today we're going to show you some cover samples, going to show you a little bit about what each one of them consists of and how they're different. And you're going to want to also see this at yearbookslive.com. So don't forget to go there to see this in video format as well. So let's talk about yearbooks covers for a second. Keep in mind that the yearbook cover for any yearbook is obviously what's on the front cover of the yearbook. Simple. Also keep in mind that this yearbook cover is the first impression that everybody's going to get on what's inside your yearbook. Some people may decide to either purchase or not purchase the yearbook based on that cover alone without ever flipping a page. So make sure that when you creating your cover, it's exciting. It's something that kids will love. It's a, it's theme based. So what you have on the cover kind of follows through with inside of those uh, in the yearbook on those pages. Take time to review as many ideas as possible. Get with your representative and ask your representative, hey, rep, what options do I have? How much craziness can go on on this cover? Can I do die cuts, spot UV, embossing, debossing, foiling? What are the craziest things I can do? And I can tell you we've had some some pretty interesting uh, questions asked about what you can do with the cover. And pretty much, depending on how much money you have to spend as a school, you can do anything you want. Um, Also, allow everybody in the class or even the school or administration to be involved in some aspects of the cover and giving their ideas. You'll be really surprised to hear some kids that are fantastic artists or very creative. They'll come up with some amazing ideas and they'll, they'll come up with stuff that you never even thought of. So make sure you also allow everybody to be involved with that yearbook cover decision process. All right, there are two basic types of yearbook covers. You have soft cover and you have hard cover. In soft cover, you have a couple of different bindings. You have something called perfect bound, where you don't see the staples, it's more squared off on the spine. So that's called perfect binding. You can do this in stitched, where it actually gets stitched in there, or you can do it where the pages are glued, which that's called PUR bound. So you have perfect binding, and then you have saddle stitch. Saddle stitch, you see the staples. So again, soft cover, saddle stitched, soft cover, perfect binding. Hard cover, you have a lot of different binding options. Hard cover books, obviously hard cover board. You have a couple of different options with doing the hard cover books when it comes to the binding itself. You have side sewn, you have Smythe sewn, which Smythe sewn allows the book to lay a little bit flatter when you're laying it on a table. And then you have PUR bound where the pages are actually glued inside. So again, Soft cover, hard cover, perfect bound, saddle stitched, hard cover, all kinds of different options. Okay, so let's talk hard cover yearbooks for a minute. Hard cover yearbooks. Let me talk to you about the parts of the covers. And really this is in in soft cover or hard cover the parts are. The front board. This is the front of your yearbook. If you were to open this book up, you can see it's one big piece of cardboard. Keep in mind, your front cover is over here your back cover, and then your spine. So keep in mind, your front cover, your back cover, your backboard, and your spine. On the front board, this is where you can start the theme of your yearbook, all the different designs. Again, all those specialty cover treatments we were talking about, foiling, embossing, debossing, etc. The spine is where you want to put different information on your school. Some schools do nothing on the spine, if you, if, as you can see here, and some will do the name of the school, the version, uh, the address, it might even be on the school, the year, the date, whatever it might be. So on the spine, you have that information. My recommendation is on the back, if you're going to do any cover treatments on the front, again, expensive cover treatments, foiling, debossing, embossing, etc. 
any of that kind of stuff, die cuts, any of that. And I'll show you some of that here in just a minute. But if you're going to do any of that, you might want to save the money and not do it on the back of the book. Very important that every time you add any piece of foiling or embossing or anything like that to your cover, if you do it on the back, you're going to add money, a significant amount of money. So keep in mind, do all of that cool stuff. You'll see some of the stuff here, the foiling and embossing. You'll see nothing on the back. So keep in mind, on your books, keep your money up front. This is where people are going to judge your yearbook. This is what they're going to see first. On the back, it's not important. Spine, front cover, back cover. Got it? All right, let's talk about covers again. Hard cover and soft covers. The standard cover type when it comes to design is called the full color lithograph cover. So you can see full color on the front, full color on the back. That could be on a hard cover or that could be on a soft cover. Full color on the front, full color on the back. Full color and hard color cover, lithographic cover. Standard can be done in Photoshop. A lot of the softwares, so yearbook software that's out there now, you can do it in the, the software itself. You can do it in Photoshop. You can do it in InDesign. Um, all kinds of ways you can create these really cool covers now. So this is your standard full color lithograph cover. On a soft cover, as you can see, just printed on thin paper, or I'm sorry, thicker paper, thicker paper than what's on the inside pages, a little bit more of a cardboard feel to it. And on the hard cover, what they do is they actually wrap, I don't know if you can see this, but they actually wrap the page from the front around and glue it down to the inside. So sometimes you might say to yourself, well, why did my whole cover slide over or move over? This was supposed to be exactly in the center. That's how I had it designed. Well, when they go ahead and they actually wrap the cover, sometimes that wrap gets pulled into in here, as you can see, the in sheet gets glued down and your, your cover design might shift a little bit. So that's the reason, because it's actually being glued to this hard cardboard. All right, so again, this is your standard full color lithograph cover. Another specialty treatment you can do on a hardcover book is your embossing and debossing. It's where they raise the image or they depress the image. It gets depressed into the cover or raised off of the cover. So that's your embossing and debossing. As you remember last time, I didn't do that on the back of the book. They only did it on the front of the book to save them money. So keep in mind, that embossing and debosses takes your images, piece of your image, all of your image, whatever you decide, you can create a die. So the, your yearbook co company will actually create a die. It's a, a metal piece of art, if you will. And you can use that die next year. So for instance, if this was your particular school logo and you wanted to use that die every year, you wanna make sure you ask your yearbook company to put that die away from you for you because those dies cost money to make. And if you have the same one year after year, then you don't have to keep making a new one every year and costing you more money and more money. If you have to create a custom die every year, you're going to pay for that die every time you make a custom die. Every piece might be a custom die, especially if you change the year on the front. That'll be custom from year to year to year. So again, embossing and debossing is simply using a die to create that raised or depressed look where you actually have feel you can actually feel the impression or the, the depression in the book. All right, again, embossing and debossing is one of your options on your cover. All right, something else you can do on the covers. You can do the embossing and debossing, but you can also do foiling on here. So every, this little gold that you see here, that's called foiling. There are many, many, many different colors now that you can use in your foil. It doesn't always have to be silver. It doesn't always have to be gold. A lot of times, your representatives are only selling foiling in silver or gold. I don't know why, because manufacturers in the foil industry now have every possible color that combination that you can think of. So you can actually foil your book pretty much in any kind of colors that you want to. So this, this gold look that you have here, this foiling look to it, that's what foiling is. Something new that's just come out in the last couple of years that's really getting to be used in the uh, high school market, if you look at here, it's called the Skodix machine. So this really cool new machine called the Skodix machine. Remember I told you about dyes earlier? So dyes, you need a dye to do foiling, embossing, debossing, and every dye costs money. And all those, 
All that work requires money and it can be very, very expensive. Well, the Skodix machine now has come along and no dies are, 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 are required anymore. There's no dies. So you can do all this really cool foiling and different custom uh, treatments to your book where you can see the lines. I don't know how good you can see this, but these little lines here, that's all just Skodix machined in, foiled or if you want to. Again, some really interesting foiling on the front. You can do it on the back with a Skodix machine and it really doesn't cost a whole lot of difference. So remember I told you before on the old foiling, old embossing and debossing, you really didn't want to do the front and the back because of cost. Nowadays, with the Skodix machine, there's really no difference. They put the whole sheet through, they, they do whatever they do on the Skodix machine to get this kind of a look. And it's really no more money now to do the front and the back as it used to be just to do the front. So if, if, you, if you have a rep out there, uh, you might want to ask them, uh, hey, you guys do this new Skodix procedures, and they have some really cool stuff uh, now that you can do. This is a really cool one. I wish you guys could feel this, but this basketball really does feel like a basketball. It gives it that textured feel to it. So don't forget, if you're working with yearbook life, definitely ask about Skodix options. Another cover option that you can do is called lenticular design. Again, little expensive, but really cool. It kind of gives your images a little bit of a depth, an illusion of depth. So almost like a 3D, really cool feel. I don't know if you can see that uh, in, the, in the video. As I move this around, you can see it changes. So it literally changes. So this particular theme was the iPhone. So if you see, it says to quest a trace one way. I don't know if you can see it, but then it opens up and it gives you the whole look of the iPhone itself. Um, so this is lenticular. Again, not every company offers this lenticular. Again, Yearbook Life does. So it's something that you can use um, and it's glued. This piece is actually a piece is like a piece of plastic that's designed and created and then glued right down into the hard cover board of your hard cover book. You can only do this on a hard cover, but lenticular is something else. If you guys want to see a sample of lenticular, um, you want me to send you something, I'd be more than happy to send you one of these books, let you take a look at it. Again, careful on your budget. It can be a little expensive, but if you got the money for it, really cool way to go. Kids love it. Something else could do, you can do uh, on the hardcovers. Uh, you've seen this book now a few times, but this book, I don't know if you can tell, has like a leathery feel to it. It's a leatherette feel. It's not what you've seen in some of the other books that I presented today. It's got this, this leatherette feel to it. It's got a different feel, a different look. Um, all of your covers can have a different look and feel, not just with leatherette, but even your litho covers that we talked about earlier. You can have all kinds of different looks and feels and textures to your covers. Those are all available as well. So let your mind wander and decide what you want to do. Pretty much anything you want to do, you can do. Just depends how much money you've got to do it. But don't forget, you do have the option to do leatherette. Leatherette and foiling and embossing kind of goes together. So you want to keep that in mind when you're deciding on your yearbook cover. All right, something else you can do, die cutting. If you can see the hole in the book here, so you see the hole in the cover, there's actually a hole, a question mark. So what we do is we take this die, we punch this hole, we create the die, which you gotta pay for, and then we create this question mark with the die, punch it through the hole of the book. Again, we didn't do anything on the back, we save you money, you only wanna do it on the front. So then we actually can create little designs on the inside end sheet, which we'll talk about in a little bit about end sheets. And then you can get this little look and feel uh, in a, in a, on the cover of your yearbook, and it's called die cutting. So something else that you could do, die cutting. Pretty much any design that you want to do on the front cover in die cutting uh, can be done. So again, let your imagination run wild. All right, keep in mind, pretty much all of those cover features that I just showed you, really geared to high schools and maybe some middle schools, Little expensive for an elementary school. You could do it in the elementary schools. We've had schools do it in the elementary schools. But for the elementary schools, it's usually a simple litho, four color litho cover, whether that's on a hard cover or a soft cover. But keep in mind, something you can do in the elementary schools that's very popular is an art contest. So the fifth grade art teacher gets all the kids in the class and she explains to them what's going on. And they give them a theme. And then they draw with simple crayons or markers on white paper. They, they design a cover. They have a cover contest. And then the PTA or the administration or somebody then judges that contest. Again, this could all be done in the art class as a regular uh, art uh, activity. So you can do the front cover. They judge who wins the front cover. And then they judge 
maybe who's in second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth place, whatever it might be, and you can put those on the back as well. So this is called the Student Art Contest Cover. It gives the book a much more personalized feel to your school, and you feature your kids on the cover. We've also had kids, um, their covers inside the book as well. So maybe on some pages, some of their artwork gets placed on the pages. For those who may not have made the front cover or the back cover, they can be put on the inside pages. So again, for elementary schools, it can be a really cool idea, especially if you have some really good artists, to do a student art contest. All right, we've talked a lot about covers. When we talk about covers, one thing I don't want you to forget when you're designing your yearbook are the in sheets. And what is an in sheet, you're going to ask. An in sheet on a hardcover book is that sheet that you open up and you get that blank piece of paper right here. That's called an in sheet. You really have one, two, three, four, five, six in sheets that you could, in, in reality, you can customize. So you can make these in sheets as creative as you want to. The options, again, how much money do you have? Keep that in mind. Always consider your budget when you're deciding what to do. Also, not every company offers all six in sheets can be printed on. So maybe they only offer two, maybe they only offer one or four, I don't know. But you have the possibility to do up to six. All right, so I just showed you all six of them. Normally, in sheets come just white. That's your standard, that's included in the cost of your yearbook, all right? The other option is you can do what's called colored in sheets. So this one happens to be red. So you can do just red in sheets. This has a little bit of a logo on it, one color logo, but you could do just red if you wanted to. Probably like back here, you just see the red with another piece of art on here. So you could do just red, blue, black, orange, whatever color, the, the, the colors run the gamut. Then you could do custom in sheets. You saw this book before and I showed you a minute ago. You see that this has a custom design on the in sheet. It's a black in sheet with a custom design. Again, with your in sheets, you can let your mind run wild of what you want to put in here. It's a really good idea maybe on your in sheet, your first in sheet if you're a high school, is to put your, your, um, your table of contents on here. Some of them on the back put their index on your in sheet in the back. So you really have a lot of options when working with in sheets. Let the theme of your book flow from your cover to your in sheets and then onto your pages. Again, when you're designing your cover, don't forget your in sheets. All right, we've talked about a lot of covers. We talked a lot about a lot of in sheets. We talked about a lot of options. Again, talk to your representative for your yearbook company. What's available? Everything you saw today is not available with every yearbook company. So you make sure you talk to your rep. It's the worst thing that can happen is you're going to get all excited about what you want to do. You start putting it together. You get your hopes up. You start telling the school. And all of a sudden, your rep comes in and says, don't know what you're talking about. Never did that before, can't do that. So you don't want to get involved with the cover until you find out what's available. Same thing with your in sheets. Keep this in mind. Very important, I talked about this a lot. Cost, cost, cost. What's your budget? Every single time you do something on that cover, every time you add foiling or embossing or debossing, a lenticular, die cut, whatever it is, it's going to cost you more money. So keep in mind, you got a budget, stick within your budget, Talk to your rep, negotiate with them. Don't let them tell you one price and that's it. Everything's negotiable. So make sure you understand you have a budget. Stick within that budget. Don't go over it. Don't break the bank on this crazy cover idea that you can't afford. I want to thank you all so much for listening to our show today. We want to make sure that you don't forget to go to yearbookslive.com to watch us on video. we got a lot of really good information today that's very visual. You want to make sure you check us out there again at yearbookslive.com. We hope you'll stay with us all year. Check out all our podcasts, Spotify, Google Play, Apple Podcasts, iTunes, anywhere and everywhere just about you can find your podcast is where you can find us. You can visit our show notes again at yearbookslive.com as well. And again, I can't beg you enough to tell everybody you know in the yearbook business and your friends uh, to check us out everywhere. Next week, we're going to give it a, giving you an overview on our media guides. A lot of people don't know that we do media guides for your high school sports teams, football, baseball, hockey, soccer, whatever it is. We do a lot of media guides for your sports teams. We're going to have an interview next uh, week with Cindy 
and Ed Schischler who are have made a lot of money producing high school media guides for their baseball program at Flanagan High School in Pembroke Pines. And they're going to show you how they did it and uh, all the tools and tips and tricks that you need. It should be a very informative show. I want to thank you again. Check us out again. Peace.